Hey everyone, welcome to Tactical Marriage TV. Today we have another special guest here on the channel, Patrick Weah. Welcome to the channel. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. So Patrick, you just arrived in the MLS. Um, you're going to start playing for Minnesota United. They had the debut, you weren't there yet, but obviously going to get minutes throughout the season. For many of us that haven't watched you play much, can you walk us through or quickly talk about um, what to expect for you? What is your playing style? I know you play as a forward. Do you prefer to play as a winger, a striker, second striker, center forward? What can we expect from Patrick Weah? So my game is like, I like going at people. It's like I'm fearless. It's the 1v1 game transition, be explosiveness and creating chances for my teammates and scoring goals. That's my game. Is And adding to that, are you more of a winger or a striker usually when you play? Uh, actually, I can play every position. Striker, mm -hmm. alt-wide, or right, right wing, or left wing. I can play anywhere. I'm comfortable anywhere up front. So you're versatile up top. And would you say you're more of a goal-scoring threat or an assist first guy? I say I'm a goal-scoring threat than an assist. That's my favorite type of forward. <laughs> um. And now, now I'm going to go a little bit into Minnesota, Minnesota United. And this is one I want to touch. So you just arrived with Adrian Heath. I believe you played for their academy as well as you, you played in college as well, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. So Adrian Heath, he's been playing a lot ever since I watched Minnesota in the playoffs and early this season, the first few game, first game. He's playing a 4-2-3-1 where he has a playmaker in the middle and he likes the wingers to come at, come at him. And we saw that with Molino last season. It worked very well. So how do you see yourself fitting in this formation? Um, maybe more as a forward, maybe as a winger. And would you say it benefits you, your style of play, with yeah. um, Reynoso playmaking? Yeah, obviously, like definitely. Um, like like you said, coach loves to play, get the ball and play forward. That's his game. And like press, high press, get the ball and play forward and go at people's throat. So like that's my game is like – if we get the ball in transition, we're attacking people, that's what I'm dangerous at. And obviously you have players like Reynoso, who if you run forward, he ain't going to find you. So, like, it makes your job easier. Just make the run. It's going to be right on your foot, and then it's your job to finish finish it off. So, yeah, it, it fits right to my abilities and my strength in that formation. And you, you, you would most likely be playing as a winger under Adrian Heath, right? Most likely? Yeah, in preseason, I play both strikers and wing on the wing. Mm -hmm. So, Okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. And now let me go to the third question I have here for you. And it's in regards, you're a dual national, if, I, if I'm right, right? You you have a nationality from Liberia and you have a nationality from the United States. Mm -hmm. If if it comes to a situation where both nations want you to play for the, the, the national team, do you have a nation set in your mind or it's something that you'd wait out and play to see? You say, I'm Liberian, I'm American. Do you have one in your mind, and do you have a reason behind it? Yeah, I think the U.S., because it has better opportunities for me. In Liberia, I mean, there are a lot of talented kids, but there ain't enough opportunities for them to make it or be seen. But I'm blessed and lucky to be here. So, like, playing for the United States is going to give me more exposure to all the clubs around the world. It's just about opportunities and uh, getting lucky. So, United States would be the right fit than Liberia. It's also much more competitive, wouldn't you say, right now, the United States? Yeah, it's very more com yeah competitive too. Yeah. And how how long have you been in the United States? Were you were you were born here? No, I I've been here since two thousand eleven. Ten years. Yeah, ten years. Yeah, so been you've been here for a long time too, and you're seventeen now. So you moved here when you were seven. You were a kid, so seven, seven, I think. Yeah, you're American at this point. You're just American now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wanted you to. Quickly describe one thing for us, quickly or take your time on this one. Um, you played in academy, you played in college, and now you're in the professional level, the highest level in the United States, which is the MLS. Mm -hmm. Could you quickly talk a little bit about each one? What are the positives or the negatives? I do have a lot of criticism with the college system in the United States and their development. The academies themselves, I see them improving a lot. The MLS also, I'm very positive on it. I like the MLS. But... Could you talk a little bit about the academy, then go to college, then go to your experience so far in the MLS? Yeah, so the academy, obviously, we played for seven months, and they got – I played for seven months in the academy, and they got rid of it, like the DA system. U.S. soccer got rid of it because for whatever reason they say it was. But, like, when I was there, the coaching staff was very helpful. Uh, that's when I got exposure to first-team training, and I 
felt like I was getting better each and every day, like in games as well. And uh, it's just that can we give you more exposure to the first team? So like that's where Minnesota saw me in the first place. It's like playing with the academy, and they invited me to come train with the first team. So that was another opportunity there. But when I was training with the first team, COVID nineteen hit. They couldn't allow people that weren't signed to train with them. So I had to go to college and make a decision on what college to go to. So I picked SLU, St. Louis University. And obviously, we couldn't play in the in the fall season, so they moved the season to the spring. And um, Minnesota United watched me play a season and then come after the season. But I played three games there, and then we were still in the process of signing me, but it was just taking too long. And then finally in the spring, it happened. So I had to leave school and come here. But when I was in school, they developed me. I wasn't there for very long, but I felt like I got better. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's probably different from other people, too. They might think the college system would be different. But for me, I felt like I improved. And then I came to, not, to the MLS, and it's a whole different level, obviously. But training with the first team earlier, I'm kind of used to that intensity. Uh, it could be, um, I, I don't know, which college did you play again for? St. Louis University. St. Louis. It could be the coaching staff there could be good. That could have been a that could have yeah. been something that helped out. Um, a lot of the colleges I even played a year in college too, and a lot of the college I've I've known and talked to people. It, it has to do with the coaching staff. So maybe the coaching staff you good you got was very good, and obviously they prepared you for the MLS level. Um, they were able to sign you as a homegrown. You didn't even go through the draft process. Um, so yeah, so they definitely worked very well with you. But I would you say would you say you benefited more from your academy years or from your college little the little college moment you had development wise? I say, I say academy years. I mean, I, I only played seven months in the academy. I wish I could have played academy sooner because mm -hmm. I would have got way more earlier. But it took me uh, my senior year in high school to play with the academy because Minnesota didn't have my age group at that time. So I didn't want it to leave Minnesota to, because I want to be with my friends and family. But but the academy system came to Minnesota with my age group, so I couldn't refuse that opportunity. And then it's just high level training compared to club soccer, and like exposure with the first team has just got me way better too. So yeah, you see, so that's something that I that's something that I want the United States to improve. So for example, they have you that you're a young talent and. Back then, they didn't have your age near you. So you either have to leave your family. They need to have more academies spread out throughout the country so you don't get to that situation. You could have started your development even earlier and be more prepared. Um, but it is what it is. It, it's getting better. It's getting better. We can all agree on that. Um, Patrick, if you had to pick a league to play at in the, in the world, one league you dream of playing one day, which one would it be and why? And don't need to go MLS. I mean, let's say one of the top leagues in the world. Which one would you choose and why? I'd say Premier League or La Liga. Mm -hmm. It's just because like that's the highest level of soccer right now. It's like either the Premier League. Premier League is number one, in my opinion, the best league in the world. The intensity and the players are just quality. And the big clubs just how they run their organizations really well. They run it really well. And then in La Liga, you have teams like Barcelona, Real Madrid, and even teams like Valencia, San Leti. La Liga, way of playing, I really admire over the Premier League. So, like, Premier League is more intensity, but, like, mm -hmm. like La Liga is more liveliness possession. And, uh, but my style of play is, like, Liverpool kind of transition. Press. Like, yeah, press and transition. So, that's my style of play. So, I'd be really great, lucky and grateful to be in that one day. That's obviously part of my goals to play in U of Top. Do you, do you prefer to beat the defenders or your style of play? Do you beat the defenders more on your your flair and skilled move or more on your pace? You have like a lot of speed and you like to beat them on speed. Which one do you – are you more of a um, – let's say Neymar tries to beat the dribble and Mbappe with speed. Would, which one would you be more towards? I think I can do both. But I usually beat them mostly with skilled moves and try mm -hmm. to get them off bounce and go at them. So – and then – this one, only if you're comfortable answering this one, because some players sometimes don't want to say a club. Is there a club that you dream of playing for one day if the opportunity comes? Uh, it's not any particular club. I just want to get the chance to play overseas in your top three leagues, and it doesn't matter what club it is. So mm -hmm. any club that gets the opportunity to play in those leagues, I'm taking it. And play Champions League. That was another yeah. dream. Yeah, Champions League. 
Yeah. Now, what would be what would be your biggest dream in soccer? Would it be to play a Champions League, win a Champions League, play a World Cup? What would be your biggest dream? If you had to choose just one, what would it be? One, uh, playing the World Cup and representing my country. That would be one. Perfect. And then last but not least, um, I'm going to talk about one quick thing. Um, you're, everyone knows you're cousin of Tim Weah um, and also um, nephew of legendary George Weah. Uh, president of that Liberia, I believe he's now, and also great soccer player, legendary soccer player. Um, how's your relationship with your cousin? Do you guys keep in touch? Do you, are you, do you guys plan on seeing each other when you're in Europe as well? How, how's that? People don't know this, but we're not that close to each other. Mm -hmm. So back in Liberia, when 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 Josh was there, like he would come back and we just have like we're just part of the big soccer family. So like soccer, and the way of naming Liberia is big. So like. Everybody in my family basically plays soccer. So, like, just being part of that made me a better soccer player. So, that my dad and George will play together. And then, as a young kid, they'll put us in the league, like, with mm -hmm. them playing with, like, grown, grown men. And, like, so we get the exposure and play and, like, like express ourselves. That's where, like, my fearless came from. It's, like, my dad always told me, don't fear nobody, like, but God. Like, and when I step on the field with anybody, I don't care who you are. I'm still gonna do my thing. So it's just like, yeah, Timothy and I are not really, really close, but over the years, I'm wishing we can build that relationship and get to know each other better. But he wasn't born in Liberia, he was born in New York. Thank yeah, you. yeah, that is true. And and ever since you came, have you seen him ever since you came to the US when he was still here before moving to abroad? No, 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 no. No, I haven't seen him. No. Yeah, but hopefully you guys can get very close too, along with George Weah too. I know he's a very, very busy guy right now, yeah. um, especially there in Liberia. It's not easy to like get a hold of him right now. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. And Patrick, uh, before we wrap up this interview, um, I want to thank you very much for being here with us. I wish you the best of luck. We're going to be following very close your steps in Minnesota. We follow many young players throughout the MLS league, and you're one of them that we're looking forward to seeing you play this season. Um, it's a young age. You're going to obviously have ups and downs throughout the season. You know that very well. But I think mm -hmm. the fearless attitude you have – is the first step you need, especially as a young athlete. So I want to thank you very much for being here with us today. Uh, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be on your podcast. Thank, thank you, you, Patrick.